canon in Doctor Who. Okay, so what many enthusiasts in fiction TV shows and movies and books and so on like to do is imagine that the show or movie or book series is an actual real world and is treated as such. This is what people call canon, with one N and we're not talking about the printing and photography company either. What is canon in a fictional universe is basically what counts as fact within the series, so say the episodes of a show that air, or books that were published by the main author, for example, would most likely be canon, and anything written by fans or individuals or companies who are not confirmed or supported by the original creators, or in some cases whoever currently owns the rights to the material, like the Disney takeover of Star Wars, who decided to decanonize, is that even a word? Well it is now. the expanded universe, or legends. Now it might not be surprising to realise that trying to sort out which is and isn't canon in a series is not always straightforward. Usually, anything officially released by the creators and or copyright owners is probably the safest way to go. So for Doctor Who, if something is released by the BBC, it's probably canon, right? Well, maybe not. And Doctor Who, with its long history of different writers and issues with copyright ownership, only makes it even more complex, but I'm going to attempt to tackle this one anyway. It's interesting to know that Russell T Davies himself wasn't too keen on applying the concept of canonicity, and yes that is actually a word, to Doctor Who. And Stephen Moffat backs this up too, and they're probably right. I'm still going to continue this video though, ha! ha! So why is separating canon from non-canon so important? Well for me, it's mostly when two or more sources contradict each other about facts within the series. Moffat confirmed that the Virgin New Adventures book series was still part of the continuity for the rest of the series, except it was a separate yet valid continuity of its own, despite it having different ideas about the history of the Time Lords to the rest of the series. Another reason why applying canon to Doctor Who is difficult is due to how it is an ongoing series, and like I mentioned earlier, has had different writers who shouldn't have to take every piece of previous content under a microscope before writing their own material just to make sure it fits in with previous stories. It would probably be pretty saddening to have a great idea for a storyline, only to find out it contradicts with some novel written in the 80s for example. So to conclude the first part of the video, there isn't really a strict canon for the show, so that means it's up to the individual fan to decide for themselves what they want to be canon or not, and make further adjustments where necessary. And that's fun, right? So from this point on, it's pretty much just all me making my opinions about what should and shouldn't be accepted as canon. So to start off, I can safely count the airing finished episodes as canon, as that's how it all started way back in 1963, which rule out any differing sources should they conflict with this type of source. I would also count any books, movies and audio stories that were officially released to be canon as well. Then there's the spin-offs, so Torture, The Sarah Jane Adventures, Class, etc, which are all part of the same universe. I would definitely consider these to be canon as well, although there are probably a few contradicting instances between these and Doctor Who's main series, as they often take place at the same time period as other shows, especially when it comes to worldwide crises like Children of Earth and Miracle Day. Video games? Well, no, I wouldn't call these canon, because one, the primary purpose of a video game is for a real world player like you or me to interact with a different storyline to the main show. And two, there's going to be different writers who actually don't care about canon or continuity even more than the main writers of the shows. And three, for example, when a player might choose down one route in the game out of several, a whole different plot may occur, so which one's canon and which one isn't, for example. Then there's comic stories, which do have interesting plot lines and twists, and for the most part I like to keep the non-conflicting story arcs in my canon. Other material that the TARDIS fandom wiki prohibits as part of the Doctor Who universe I won't count as canon either, so a big no-no to fanfiction, unlicensed material or charity work, any parodies, stories with any Doctor Who actors in, or theories and scrap plot lines they talk about, even if they are in their roles and yet not following the other in-universe rules. Merchandise, material presented in a way that isn't narrative such as on a trading card, 
and trailers or teasers which occasionally will differ to the actual final aired episode. Oh, and funnily enough, the Doctor Universe ranks above any facts we know from the real world, so if there are any contradictions, our favourite fictional multiverse is correct, and the real world accounts are actually not true in the Hooniverse. And note, the 10th Doctor riding on a sleigh TARDIS with several reindeers, with several Daleks dancing to the old BBC theme music, are not canon, even if they are awesome. The deleted scenes is something I'll personally credit as canon though, only because it's often the case that there was simply not enough time to include the scene in the episode. For me, as long as the context of the scene fits in with everything else, and other stories, I don't see why it can't be canon. Unless the scene was altered in some way that is included in the final version, then the final version of the scene would be canon, and the deleted scene would not be. If a new story comes out that conflicts with a deleted scene though, it would have to be removed from my canon though, sadly. I will also try to count the comic relief or Red Nose Day specials as canon where possible too, unless it's the Catherine Tate vs 10 episode or something similar that involves the real world, like Music of the Spheres, or Rowan Atkinson's role as the Doctor, which obviously didn't happen. I will also count the prequels and Tardisos, specifically the ones as part of the series 2 and 6 as canon where possible although these are more created for the purpose of introducing the viewer to the episodes. As a whole, where I am uncertain about what should and shouldn't be canon, I'll just resort to a case by case basis, depending on the video. And that's pretty much it for this video, I apologise if it was slightly boring, but I wanted to get my version of the canon across to you guys in preparation for my upcoming videos, so you should subscribe if you want to be notified of when I upload them, and click the bell, etc, you know the drill. And I'll see you in the next episode. On Series 11 isn't canon. Yes, I said it. Bye.